So I'm going to switch the scene, pause the music and switch the scene now. It's in-game. Pause there. And we're in. All right then, guys. Welcome back to game two between PL and Don't Lame Us, please. And I tell you what, I've not been so excited for a game in quite some time. That first game from Don't Lame Us, please was absolutely fantastic. And getting a first point against PL is no, no small deal. It is a very big deal. And Don't Lame Us, please are going to be extremely pleased with that first game. Going to be feeling very good going into the second game as uh, PL are definitely a superior team team you would think going into this so uh, congratulations to don't lame us please in that first game but we are going to get game number two underway now and game number two is ancient lake version of four this map has been updated between round one and round two of the group stage you may notice because it looks completely different now uh, the lake is much larger the uh the kind of the the private lakes are gone the teams are basically split onto each side of the map and i've got to say i don't like this version of the map as much as the last version of the map um unfortunately since this map has changed there are no crossing points there are no uh, shallows there's no flank war it's basically just going to be a one strategy map and that is a galley rush you have to galley rush this map now there's no option to do a feudal aggression there's no option to rush and uh, you basically it, this map may as well be uh, i don't know baltic or something like that because it's basically going to be uh, galley rush only so that's the the major change there between week one and week two of this event the map here is uh, definitely changed, obviously. It's it's hugely different. And for all we know, it may change again between now and week three because a lot of people aren't happy with this map. A lot of people are fairly disgruntled and uh, they kind of want to see either it reverted back to how it was or some more adjustments made some more. So, yeah, unfortunately... Uh, yes, as Toby1248 says in the chat, it's more like Highland with a widened center area. Potential though for landings. I mean, there is always a potential for a landing when there's a lot of water on the map, but uh, it's not quite like Team Islands where landings are a lot more common. I feel like landing on this map might be a little bit more difficult because you've only got the front of the shoreline to defend, whereas on Team Islands, obviously, you have water at the back of your base as well. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, we'll introduce the players and see who we've got. And uh, for the left side of the map, on the left side of the map, sorry, for the team PL, up to the very north of the map in the teal, we've got PL Jack playing as the Mongols. In the pocket position here for these guys, in the orange, we've got PL Remy, he's playing as the Huns. And in the other pocket position, just to the south of him, we've got PL Jam Jack playing as the Mayans in the grey. And down at the very south, in the green, we've got PL Bitey Cablum playing as the Vikings in the green. Uh, that's Team PL. And of course, over to the other side of the map, we have the uh, very valiant, the very good, uh, don't lame us please, uh, up to the north of the map here. For these guys, they've got Spring playing as the Mongols. Spring making an appearance. Spring, of course, uh, you guys probably know him most from winning the Zero Empires Invitational. Well, here he is in The War Is Coming, uh, playing with his uh, Don't Lame Us Please friends, and uh, he's in the blue there. There's the Mongols. In the pocket position for Don't Lame Us Please, we've got Vic Vinchester playing in the purple as the Huns. In the other pocket position, in the yellow, we've got Vic DFS playing as the Mayans. And down to the very south is, uh, in the red, uh, Vic Warrior playing as the Vikings for the Don't Lame Us Please team. So these civs then, let's have a quick look. We've got Vikings, Mongols, uh, Huns, and of course the Mayans. Everyone is pretty much chosen here to go for water civilizations. It's it's pretty expected stuff. Um, Mayans on both teams as well. It's completely mirrored across the map. And uh, I mean, water civs are going to be the, the, the key here, really. It's all about water now. There's going to be no, you know, Vikings on the flank, drushing and things like that. Uh, it's going to be all about who can get up to the feudal age fastest, who can do the best grush, but it's going to be more about that in a team sense. Now, in a 1v1, obviously, getting up to the feudal age as fast as possible um, with enough eco to sustain galleys from three or four docks if you're the Vikings. That's what it's all about. But, oh... Oh, Vic Warrior there losing his scout, trying to lure that boar in. Uh, not a lot he could have done about that, to be fair. Uh, if he moved his scout out the way, the boar would have run away, uh, or, or run away from underneath the TC. The scout was pretty trapped, unfortunately. 
But yeah, like I was saying, in a 1v1, it's all about the speed. Uh, it's all about as, uh, being as fast as you can and basically out microing your opponent. But in a 4v4, it kind of changes a little bit. The pocket players certainly have a little bit more option. They don't have to do a super fast feudal because the reinforced distance is much more. And um, they, they might not be able to contribute too much to the fight from the pocket position. So sometimes you'll see the pocket players do a bit more of a fast castle. However, because this is a kind of, you know, there's no backwater, it's all water, all, all the docks are on the front, we might just see all pocket players doing a fast feudal as well, and we'll see a, a, an interesting dynamic of four players against four players, uh, bo all of them trying to do the best galley rush they possibly can. So we'll see if um, if we see any landings coming in. I find it a little bit strange that we have the Mayans in play here because the Mayans aren't typically up there with the water sieves. The water sieves really are, of course, the Vikings, the, Mo I mean, the Mongols are not even that much of a water sieve, I guess. Uh, I mean, they're decent because of that hunt bonus, giving them a faster feudal time. But Japanese... The uh, the Saracens, they're, they're, they are probably, uh, you know, arguably better water civilizations. The Saracens for the faster firing galleys, the Japanese for their cheaper wood on the uh, eco buildings, uh, things like that. That is what really helps. But I, I don't know about the, the pick of the Mayans here and, the, and the, uh, the pick of the Mongols, but we will see if either team perhaps will uh, attempt a landing or something along those lines. Uh, this really weird bit of land in the north as well. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but uh, PL Jack just sent his scout up there. There's like a, a tiny bit of land that goes all the way up to the north of the map. It, it serves no purpose, but uh, it could be a way to, to have a sneaky dock. And I think this is a little bit unfair, actually, for the Don't Lame Us Please team, because Jack could come up here with a villager all the way up, and he could build a dock right in the corner of the map, send a transport across, and uh, drop some units on spring side of the map there. Um, and pretty difficult for spring to scout that or have any idea of that coming in so anyway fuel edge is done for pretty much everyone the last one up will be jam jack here uh, but he's going up on 28 population actually though it does look like he will do a full-on galley rush and it seems like that's going to be the case for all of the players here and the thing we're going to be really wanting to watch out for is basically uh, if we will see four docks for uh, anyone else but the viking player the viking player will be expected to go with four docks but um we will have to keep a close eye on whether we see the Hun player adding in that fourth dock as well, which is certainly a viable option, but something that might not be done immediately. A little bit of aggression in the middle already. PL Jack and Vinchester having a little skirmish there. Uh, Vinchester might bring his galley back to be repaired, but he's definitely not going to be able to fight that one one-on-one. -on -one. Meanwhile, Spring going to go straight in for the fishing ships, but going to have to go back as uh, Jack reinforces. Though Spring has got more health on these galleys, so he may as well fight, actually, for what it's worth. Remy coming in here as well, and Vinchester reinforcing his own galleys now, trying to keep that one at the back nice and safe, trying to micro as best as they can. And I think galley wars really are a real test of micromanagement. There's a lot of micromanagement involved, and it's really important that you micro well to keep your galleys alive, or as many galleys alive as possible. Uh, Jam Jack there, kind of uh, one galley kind of just left out in the open just to be focused, fired down. And uh, looking at this, though, it does seem to me like the Don't Lame Us Please team have a little bit of an imbalance in their dock locations. We have a quick look here. We've got uh, the, uh, the the docks from uh, green and uh, grey really close to each other. We've got the docks from orange and teal very close. But the docks from red are kind of like out on a limb. They're really far away from the docks of yellow. So yellow's got quite a long distance to reinforce red with, uh, which could be a slight disadvantage to don't lay as please as well. Uh, but one thing I've noticed pretty quickly here is that PL, four docks for the Mayan player already. We've got four docks from the Mongol player, and it looks like everyone here is attempting for, to, for four docks at some point. Um, with the Mongol player in the north just still on the three, but we've got four out for the Hun player. We've got four out for uh, the Vikings and the Mongols, as uh, sorry, the Mayans as well. So PL going with four docks on three of their players already, and uh, that could lead them to having a slightly larger military population at the moment. 
the Remy, the uh, the orange player, has got the most galleys out with 14 on the map. The least galleys at the moment is 9, and that's split between Warrior. And that's, that's kind of unfortunate, actually. Warrior and DFS uh, are both with 9 galleys at the moment. They're, they're really outnumbered here by Kablam and Jamjack. Jamjack and Kablam with 13 and, and 11 galleys uh, in this fight. So Vic Warrior and DFS... And a little bit of a dangerous location now. Of course, if they get forced right back, that could mean that PL will take a dock from them. And it's going to be a really bad time for these guys to fight. As Jam Jack and Kablam both have many more uh, docks on the water. Uh, sorry, galleys on the water at the moment. In the north, uh, it seems like Winchester and Spring have quite a forward hold. It looks like PL Jack and Remy are looking pretty defensive. But Remy still has the most galleys on the water. And he's got Fletching done already as well. This is the perfect time for these guys to attack. Fletching coming in for everybody slowly but surely but spring does not have fletching here in this fight remy has the most galleys on the water and i don't know why pl jack is going back these guys have a huge advantage here and uh, pl will be able to pick off quite a few galleys if they stick in and fight but jack going back and uh, spring getting a couple of pot shots there on Remy. These guys should really stick together here. In the south of the map, the um, fletching upgrade is done for everybody but Warrior. So again, PL now have another advantage. They have more galleys on the water in the south, and they're focusing down DFS. DFS 2v1 as Vic Warrior runs back. DFS down to nine galleys. Make that eight. And Vic Warrior down to eight galleys as well. Still... Ah, there we go. Just getting fletching there is uh, Vic Warrior. Spring here, no fletching yet as well. He's the last player now to get fletching and the reason why I bring that up is because fletching is so important in these fights. You have to get fletching as early as possible without of course stopping your galley production um, because that extra range, that extra one attack will allow you to do a lot more damage overall but this is looking really bad for uh, the Don't Lame Us Please team at the moment as uh, the fishing ships are going down from Warrior, and Warrior's down to 10 galleys now, but we've got 15 galleys for Jam Jack, and Remy's on 20 at the moment as well. Uh, 2v1 on Spring as Spring runs back, and uh, for some reason Remy's going back there as well. We've also got Winchester coming down in the south here. They're going to go 3v1 on uh, the uh, grey and the green player, Jam Jack and Kablam. This could be where they start to pull it back a little bit. They might get a few kills. Of course, Winchester here has a pretty potent army. He's closing the gap, closing the distance between himself and Jam Jack. As a result, they're actually getting a pretty good trade here. PL still in the score lead though, but Jam Jack going to lose all of his galleys. Wow! Wow, Winchester letting those two get away with so little health, but they are pushing this one back. However, Spring being pushed back in the north, he's finally got Fletching done, and he looks like he's got about even numbers. In fact, he's got more numbers than PL Jack here. Remy seems really cautious at the moment with his galleys, but that was a good engagement by the Double Labour's Police team. But they might might fall into the trap of overextending a little bit if they're not careful. Uh, Kablam here, 25 galleys on the water. Just 13 from DFS. And DFS going to run in. Going to lose a ton of galleys there for nothing. And um, Warrior going to lose a few as well. That Castle Age upgrade though, not on the way for anyone just yet. Aside from PL Jack. Wow. PL Jack getting up to Castle now. And uh, still pushing the spring back as well with the help of Remy in the north. But that early Castle time for Jack going to be pretty significant. It's going to force... A certain playstyle out of the Don't Lame Us Please team. Spring and Remy going all out into this fight here. But Remy's got about four more galleys on the water at the moment. He's uh, got a little bit of nice micro coming in here as well. And uh, that is a big loss for Spring. He's seven, eight galleys behind at the moment. And uh, Vinchester's coming in from behind though. They've kind of got Remy sandwiched. It's a Remy sandwich at the moment. As uh, Vinchester tries to micro out of the way of Jack. But yeah, it's a basically a one unit war. Which is the only downside to this map. Though so far, has been pretty interesting. And uh, the PL guys demonstrating some good teamwork and some good micro. Uh, they are starting to take down these docks from Warrior though. And that is a big concern. Because Vic Warrior is... Uh, uh, not oh he is sorry now up to the castle age but obviously if he starts losing these docks he's losing his galley production he doesn't really have any other options of where to build galleys it's not like docks it's not like he can build them on the back and he's only got 19 galleys out on the map at the moment 
And comparing that to the 32 of Bitey Cablum, um, that's not looking great at all. Bitey Cablum, much slower up to the castle age, though, at the moment. Most players have clicked up, or they're nearly there. Spring hasn't. Bitey Cablum hasn't, but Jack is now already up, and of course he's going to be getting that War Galley upgrade straight away, that's on 30%, and these guys are going to be looking to push straight out. The nice thing about this map, I guess, for the team who is in the lead, is that the other team doesn't really have anywhere to run. They kind of, you know, they can't go all the way to the corner of the map and round the back of the land. They have to either go up to the top and get cornered, or they have to just keep running in circles, which gives the, I think the team who's in the lead, I think it gives them a certain advantage. So Jack coming in, forcing the fight on this uh, dock here. Obviously, Vinchester doesn't want anything to do with that. He's going to move away. But that dock there, uh, obviously probably not going to contain the war galley upgrade, but just gonna, uh, is going to get taken down before that galley can come out, which means that the Vinchester's down to three docks, and once you reach the Castle Age, you really want to be getting your fifth dock up pretty shortly after, or pretty soon after. So, once that Castle Age upgrade comes in, the fifth dock should be, you know, coming up fairly soon as well. But, Vinchester lost one. Warrior's lost all of his docks so far, that last dock just being taken down. And uh, Warrior now needs to get some more docks somewhere else. He's building them up here a bit closer to DFS. But those War Galley upgrades uh, are starting to come in now. And of course the first one to do that will be PL Jack as uh, those uh, docks from Spring now get taken down as well. And these guys losing their docks, they're losing their military production capacity, and that is really bad news. Obviously now, uh, DFS coming in with uh, Warrior in the south, Bitey Cablum getting caught out a little bit here. Obviously he's not up to the castle age yet, he was the last one to click up, and as a result, uh, losing a few galleys here to DFS's war galleys, and uh, giving... Um, Vic Warrior, a little bit of an opportunity to get some more galleys out, but the overall galley count is really in favor of PL at the moment. However, Remy here getting taken down pretty quickly in the north. Spring still only with the war galley though, as he comes in to try and fight here against these, uh, sorry, Spring with only galley, trying to fight against war galleys. Not ideal. Vinchester getting forced back here as well. And uh, like I say, there's not really anywhere for Spring to run. He's just got to try and buy some time, I think. Uh, pretty big advancement here from Warrior and DFS. These guys have both now got the War Galley upgrade, but uh, the highest number of galleys for the Don't Lame as Please team is 26. The highest number of galleys for PL is 44. Uh, so there's a pretty big difference there in the galley count. And that could be pretty bad news for the Don't Lame as Police team. They need to try and get some docks from PL, because if they can get some docks, then they can actually get a little bit more, um, you know, a, a little bit of an advantage in production. But of course, the PL team got to have more production at the moment, which means more boats, which means more um, more opportunities to kill stuff. Uh, Bicey Kaplan going in a little bit early there, though, doesn't have the War Galley upgrade, and as a result, loses about eight or nine galleys, but that war galley upgrade popping and Jam Jack and Bitey Cablum have about 60 war galleys between them against the 40 uh, or 50 of Vic War and DFS, so they have the advantage there. Vinchester coming in now as well, but at the south, you can see what I was on about, the five docks now up for Bitey Cablum, the uh, five docks now up for Jam Jack, and that's exactly where they want to be at this point in time. However, fighting 3v2, not a great idea. The PL guys here losing a little bit more than they perhaps would have liked. Uh, Jam Jack having to go back, and it seems like, it seems like Don't Lame This Please might just be about even once again in terms of galleys at this point in time. We'll have a real quick look though at economies because that's also something that is so, so important. Uh, TC is starting to come up for all of these players now, but is anyone not getting their second and third TC up yet? Of course, um, Mr. Green by T. Cablum here, a little bit slower with those town centers. In fact, putting uh, emphasis on a university first, just having a quick scan over here. It looks like everybody's got at least two town centers up. Most players with three, actually. So the economy side of it is fine for now. Having a quick look at the population. PL Jack with 54 villagers. Jam Jack with 60, actually. That's really good for him. But Jam Jack got seven, just seven war galleys left. PL seem like they might just be um, on the back foot on the water. However, Spring has lost all of his docks in the north, and it seems to me like these guys, don't let me please, may just have overextended a little bit there. 
as DFS gets surrounded and all of his war galleys go down. Last one down. Uh, Vic Warrior losing a few there as well. So Spring got zero galleys now. We got 17 from Vic Warrior. We've got uh, nine from DFS and Vinchester's got 13. Uh, don't lame us, please. Suddenly looking very, very ropey as they uh, obviously have lost a few docks. In fact, Vinchester hasn't rebuilt his docks or anything here. And like I was saying earlier, it's going to be really difficult to do a landing or anything like that simply because... Um, you know, the, the front of the enemy's base is covered in docks. It's going to be really difficult to sneak past that when they're going to have that line of sight there. And you can't go around the back or anything like that either. So, yeah, it's, it's looking a little bit worse now for, for Don't Lame Us Please after losing that fight on the left. And once again, uh, they might end up losing some more docks as well. The five docks are up for Vic Warrior. Just four for DFS, still only uh, three now for Winchester, and still zero for Spring. Perhaps Spring is going to try and sling or something like that, but I, I don't see how that would really help them in this situation. They need numbers rather than, than a sling or anything like that. So, I mean, it's literally just a one uh, strategy map now that they've updated it to version four, which is pretty unfortunate. And uh, Bitey Gablum and, of course, uh, Jam Jack in the middle here. You know, winning a few minor victories, taking out some more ships from DFS. Uh, it just doesn't seem like Don't Lame Us Please are going to be able to keep the galley numbers up. They're, they're down to a total of 20 galleys for the entirety of their team. Whilst uh, PL have 20, 40, 80, 80, 90. Galleys. So 20 galleys versus 90 galleys. You guys can do the maths. And I'm unsure now what Don't Lame Us Please are planning to do. We'll check their docks to see if they have any uh, transport ships coming out. But if there's no transports, then they are basically you know, locked on their islands. And there's not a lot they can do about it. Um, I mean, just 20 uh, galleys on the water. Make that 19 now. Uh, I, like I said, I just don't know what their plan is going to be. Perhaps they'll try and go up to the Imperial Age and then make some castles on the shoreline and then push it back. But it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. The one thing is for sure that they're not giving it up just yet. But even then saying that, they're not exactly ahead in eco either. Um, PL Jack... PL Jam Jack, they both have more population than any of the uh, Don't Lame Us Please team uh, for Eco. So it's uh, it's just not looking good. I, I guess I, I, it's, it's a shame that they've changed Ancient Lake to this because there, there's no real options now. There's no If you lose the water, that's it. There's no real options. Um, of course, they're going to try and make some kind of a comeback, otherwise they would have resigned by now. But the PL guys have a bigger eco at this point in time anyway. Jam Jack is up to Imperial. Vinchester's up, but there are, Jam Jack's ahead. Um, no one else is up to Imp just yet. Just Jam Jack and uh, Vinchester. And uh, obviously Ooh. Jam Jack here, going to be uh, upgrading it to a Galleon as soon as he can. Uh, thank you, AdGold90, who just became a Wallolo Warlord. Best new subscriber right there. Uh, appreciate your support, man. And uh, welcome to the Wallolo Warlords. Don't forget to enter the monthly subscriber competition. I will be giving away the Thermal Take headset tonight on the stream. And I'll be doing it at the end of the stream. So make sure you enter. Otherwise, you will not be eligible to win. Uh, underneath the stream, click on the picture of the headset where it says November subscriber competition. And you can enter right there. If you don't enter, you won't have a chance of winning. So make sure you do that. I cannot stress it enough. Um, so yeah, like I say, the the PL team looking amazing at the moment. I mean, they're already going up to Imperial Age. It's going to be very difficult for Don't Lame Us Please to get back onto the water now. They're going to spread their boats all along the shoreline, prevent them from building any docks. They're going to make sure that uh, the Don't Lame Us Please team aren't putting up castles on the shoreline as well, which I imagine they're going to try and do. There's that castle from Vinchester now. I mean, we could we could see that coming a mile off. It's the go-to strategy, but there's the landing from uh, the PL team. And of course, the PL team here taking advantage of that water control to allow them to land. Jamjack, the uh, Mayan player, about to hit Imperial, putting up some barracks, and we know what's coming next. It's going to be um, Elite Eagle Warriors 
coming out of his ears uh, very shortly as that Imperial Age upgrade is done. Vinchester now up to Imperial as well. Question is, will he be able to stop this? He's got no land units at all, no military on the land at all. And uh, yeah, obviously uh, for Vinchester here, He's going to have to either quickly wall this in, which seems to be the case. Yeah, they're going to try and quick wall this to stop those villagers um, getting around. But of course, that castle now might secure them a little bit of an opportunity on the water to get it back, uh, to get back in. But yeah, nice, nice reaction from Don't Lame Us Please there. Very well played, putting up those universities and those walls to basically prevent those units from getting in and uh, causing a, you know, a little wall off. So we might just see those villagers go back onto the transport and land somewhere else. And you can see, don't let us please, desperately, desperately walling up now to prevent those villagers and that landing attempt from succeeding. Meanwhile, Vinchester's trying to take the water back. And in the north, we've got another landing. It's Remy this time coming in with the landing. And Spring does not look prepared. He will be putting up these walls as fast as he possibly can. He's up to the Imperial Age now as well. But the knights from Remy are already here, and uh, it doesn't look like Springer's going to be able to stop this. Uh, Remy is the Huns, that cavalier upgrade's going to be coming in very quickly. And Spring desperately trying to wall it off to stop the knights getting in, but they're already in. And there's no land army from Spring here at all. There's nothing to deal with these knights, and if uh, Remy can prevent Spring from walling this, then uh, he will be able to keep sending those knights through time after time. Uh, not looking good then. But don't lame us, please. They're losing a lot of villagers here trying to defend. And of course, those boats from the water just hammering down the damage, laying down the damage. Vinchester has got Galleon now, but he's still massively outnumbered. And there's no counter-attack coming in from any of the Don't Lame Us Please players at this point in time. Ram coming out now for Remy. And it doesn't look like Spring is going to be able to defend this easily at all. The Knight's running all over his economy. There's another hole in the north. And Remy's going to be getting that Cavalier upgrade very soon. Spring spending all of his stone, it seems, on just walling up. But just not managing to get the walls up in time. As those Knights come in once again. And that Cavalier upgrade is completed. So very well played by PL. It looks like they've got this one in the bag. I mean, it was pretty, um, pretty certain already that that, uh, that that game was in the bag once they won the water. But uh, don't lame us, please. Still holding on in there. And I see those wall emotes, those hole emotes in the chat. You've got to love it. Uh, Wizard winner suggesting the hole emotes. And uh, you guys spam that one quite a lot. So I feel like that is a good emote. It's uh, it's all good in the hood. And it looks like it's going to be GG for spring pretty soon. He's not really got much up here in the north. And he's losing it really quickly. This castle is going to go down to mere rams by the looks of things. As they pile into that. And obviously everyone now is up to the Imperial Age. That's all eight players. And uh, we've got uh, Vinchester trying to retake the water here. And we'll probably see the Galleon upgrade coming in from a few of the PL teams so that they can ensure that they keep the water control. We've got another landing though on this left side. PL Jack now landing in as well. And of course the more landings there are, the more difficult it's going to be uh, to basically stop it. Because they're coming in all over the place. And uh, don't lame us please, can't just wall up the entire front of their map. Eventually they'll get through. And that capped ram upgrade being completed for Remy now. Uh, of course that means... That that uh, the, the castle is down and Remy's in. Uh, there's going to be no trade left here for, for Don't Lame Us Please. They're, they're just getting trade going, but it's not going to last very long as those Cavalier with plus four defense sit in their economy and uh, cause trouble. They're, they're not giving up just yet, though. You've got to give it up. Don't Lame Us Please. Not willing to give the game up just yet, even though the scores are uh, on average about, what's that, 2,000 advantage to PL at the moment moment just in the score there and that galleon upgrade now being done for bitey cablum and jam jack as well they're gonna force vinchester back off the water as uh, vinchester just cannot make enough galleons in this situation and uh, let's be honest guys it is gg at this point as please springs base has been basically reduced to rubble as those capped rams surround his town centers and kill his villagers are we potentially gonna see another you have been defeated in this game i i doubt it i I think the GG will be coming before then, but uh, yeah, it looks like looks like Warriors holding out for now 
as those elite eagles start hammering down on those buildings. He's still trying to wall this up behind here, um, but uh, keeping himself safe for now. Yellow player still walled up, that four to five wall upgrade completed. But yeah, Winchester not able to hold the water here. And the, the breach is in the north of the map. Spring not able to keep them out. And Spring's lost all of his town centers now. All but one. All but two. Uh, but that one's falling as well as that trebuchet now deploys on it as well. And let's be honest, it is over for the Don't Lay Miss Please. All the galleons sitting under this castle here because they can. And uh, hey, actually, that's DFS. DFS has some galleons. I did not expect that one. The Bitey Cablum here versus DFS. They've both got, uh, well, actually, Bitey Cablum has the advantage. Um, DFS had some galleons, but he lost them very quickly. Uh, lacking the plus four attack and lacking plus one defense. Winchester uh, also doesn't have the ship armor here, so Vitae Kablam much better ships at the moment thanks to that extra armor. And I don't know what Remy's doing with his Cavalier, but basically, yeah, it's it's over. It's been over for a little while, and yeah, the Eagles are in now as well. They made they made their way in. The Eagles have landed, and Winchester resigns as uh, obviously his eco is now hit by this. And it was a good game from PL. They did a very good job of winning the water. And that's GG from Don't Lame Us Please. PL gonna take the victory and uh, bring this series level one all. Uh, well played to PL. They did do a great job of winning the water there. Obviously the water game for Don't Lame Us Please. Not quite up to par, not quite up to scratch as the PL team. But uh, like I say, I feel disappointed that this map has been changed to version 4 instead of version 3. I feel like it is now a one strategy map. It's all out grushing and if you lose the water, you've pretty much lost the game. So it's a little bit unfortunate that um, it's, it's happened this way, that the map has changed. Perhaps it will change again, like I said. But yeah, I, I just wish that it was returned to the... Um, <laughs> to the uh, to the, the the crossing version, the the other version that we had. So there we go, game number two. PL gonna take the win, and that makes it one all at the moment. And we're gonna go to game number three right away. And we're not gonna mess around here. We're gonna get things 